here we have jumped across the pond and we're in America. We have two lamps, obviously of the same type, which came out of that package by Westinghouse. This was before uh, Westinghouse vanished, so to speak. It's, the, it's a genuine Westinghouse lamp. I know Westinghouse lamps became Phillips, but the name still carried on by another company which imported lamps from the Far East. This, these lamps are certainly not Far East lamps, and they were, as I say, the original Westinghouse. I'll show the lamps and the etch that's on the top of them. Give you an idea what they are. There we are. Traffic signal. 8,000 hours, 67 watts at 130 volts. Base down to horizontal USA, that means the the actual the position the bulb would be when it uh, to run it at. So you'd either have it upright or horizontal. Let's have a close look at the filament. They say it's done. It's um, supposedly would do eight thousand hours, so it's got to be a fairly good, well-supported filament. And as you can see, it's a very strong-looking job. It's got five supports. And all in all, quite well made. As with American lamps, there is no fusing in the base, which is quite normal. But I will show you. You're probably wondering why is the filament wreath so low down in the lamp? I wondered that at one time. Now remembering what these lamps are for, mainly traffic signals, so traffic lights, uh, warning lights used on the roads. Lights which would need a reflector behind them. And the reason the filament is low down is to give the best possible position for best focus when there is a reflector behind it. It's all to do with the uh, the focal point. If it was up too high and normal it would not be any good. But having it low down you can focus like a beam of light straight out of the uh, the traffic signal. The English traffic signal lamps are exactly the same. They are like a rough service lamp but uh, slightly higher wattage and the filament arrangement is low down like this. So if you ever pick a lamp up and you wonder where, it, where it's come from and it's, it looks something like that with a low down filament then more chances are it was used on a traffic signal. Anyhow let's we can light one of these up. I've got to be careful because it's um, as I say it's 130 volts so I've got to wind it up gently. Right, let's see. Juice is off at the moment. Turn the light off and we'll slowly wind it up. We're at 50 volts. And we're coming up to about 90 volts, which I'm going to leave it at that. There she goes at 90 volts. The other lamp is exactly the same. It's just uh, there was two in the packet. Turn it over so you get a good view of the side view. I'll turn it down a bit. There's 
there's what, what it looks like. It's quite a bulbous envelope to the lamp as well. It's not the normal standard size or shape as a normal household lamp in the States would be. But nevertheless, a well-made lamp. And um, it's a little, a little, a little bit grubby. Sorry about that. I try to protect the actual etch. I don't, I don't want to rub that off. And uh, unfortunately, I do have a lot of antique dust. That's what you're seeing. Bring it right down. You get the shape of the filament, which I think is a characteristic shape for these um, uh, traffic lights. Not all of them use that shape. As I say, the English ones use a zigzag, rough service type filament. I suppose you could say this is all virtually a rough service filament. Anyhow, for reaching 8,000 hours, I think they would do pretty well. Anyhow, once again, any questions please ask. Um, I'll try and get back to you with an answer if I know the answer that is and this is one of the genuine good old-fashioned uh, Westinghouse or Westie made lamps in America across the pond thanks again for watching thank you I do appreciate that thank you